I'm 27 years old and I've started four businesses in the past five years. Two of them I sold for quite a lot of money. One of them I crashed and lost a lot of money. And the latest is my ticket to financial freedom and yours too. And here's some advice for people who want to get rich in their 20s. Don't start a business. On the night of my 23rd birthday, I remember sitting in bed. <laughs> no, not doing that thinking that I had almost everything I ever wanted in my life. I was just back from a year of backpacking, I had great experiences, and I had time. The only thing I didn't have was money. I remember looking at my bank app and I had 81 euro in my bank account and I was also in debt. Like I literally couldn't even take my girlfriend out for dinner. You see, the thing about money is that it's very easy to measure and having an absence of it for me left me feeling a little bit empty. Almost like all the other things didn't matter. And going to bed that night on my 23rd birthday, I thought of myself five years beforehand when I was 17 and asked myself, what would my 17 year old be saying to me right now? And the line that came to my head was, you are nowhere near where I thought you would be. So there and then I decided that in five years time, I was absolutely not gonna let that happen again. A very wealthy man once told me, you can have it all, but you can't have it all at once. And I wanted to just, invalidate that. Money was the last piece of the puzzle. And I decided that all I was gonna focus on was having one million dollars to my name by the time I was 28 years old. That was my one goal and nothing was gonna stop me. So what did I do? I had an engineering degree, but I didn't want to be an engineer. Smart move that was. But even if I did, a job that would pay me 50 grand a year wouldn't move the needle in getting me towards that one million by 28. Also, I didn't really like the idea of having someone else in charge of my time. So the only logical option that I thought I had to get there was to start a business. Ideally in tech, that would allow me to accelerate towards that goal. I had subscribed to Gary Vee, re-watched the social network, so technically I was kind of all set. My friend and I came up with an idea and we started a business in an industry that we knew very little about. And having no existing skill set or industry knowledge in the business we were starting was the first problem that we had. Yeah, we were young, ambitious and naive, which does have its advantages, but because we had so much to learn, we moved twice as slow as my rival. My rival. <laughs> you see, as we built the business further and further, we started to get a little bit of traction. And I wanted to benchmark how well we were doing against somebody else. That year, we were selected to be one of Ireland's 30 under 30 entrepreneurs. And I distinctly remember picking another guy on the list. And I said, right, this guy seems to have his shit together. Let's use him as our measuring stick to see how well we're doing. He was older, had a lot more experience, and had just raised a seven-figure round of funding. But I thought I had more passion than he did. So I branded him as my rival, which is hilarious considering where we are now, but we'll get to that in a bit. So as my skill set and knowledge got better, slowly but surely, we managed to spot a few more opportunities within the space and one business turned into two businesses. And I was flat out. I had no time for anything other than what was bringing me closer to my goal. But that's what I'm supposed to do as a founder, right? Work on reasonable hours, have no salary, and have no social life. It got so bad that I remember getting to the stage where my friends wouldn't text me to hang out at the weekend. And I would say to myself, yes, more time to work on my $1 million mission. Which, looking back, you know, is kind of an awful way to look at it. Not just because you're losing touch with your friends, but because time is an awful form of leverage when it comes to a business. And two years on from the same night I gave myself my one million dollar mission, I completely and utterly burnt out on my 25th birthday. And when I say burnt out, I mean properly burnt out. I had permanent bruising underneath my eyes that are thankfully now gone. I could not look at a screen, be it a laptop or a television, for longer than 20 minutes. And the thought of doing any work that required mental capacity just was not in my remit. I know I'm smiling now, but it was terrible. And you know, with this came a major lesson. If time is your form of leverage for starting a business, that's your sign that you should probably build up a skill set or industry knowledge elsewhere before doing so. Because like me, you'll be relatively ineffective, you will work way too much, and you'll burn out. Luckily, a few things were aligning for me at the time. It was during COVID, my businesses were in the education technology space, which was absolutely booming at the time, and I had a few people approach me to see whether they wanted to buy the businesses. And I saw that as my ticket out. I was gonski, so I just sold them. Now, selling those businesses didn't quite get me to a million, but considering I was 25 and I still had three years to go, it was a decent step to get in there. But even after selling these businesses, it wasn't enough because when I was looking at my rival, he had just raised another round. This time, it was eight figures. So what did I do? 
I automatically put my money into building another business. A bigger business. More risk for more reward. And I remember a friend of mine texting me at the time asking me was what I was doing a little bit risky. And I remember sitting in this very chair thinking that I prefer the risk of trying something extraordinary and failing than the risk of being what I considered average consistently. And it was slightly different this time because I had learned to bring leverage to my side. Thanks, Naval. You see, 20 years ago, it was the rich versus the poor. Now it's leveraged versus unleveraged. And there are three types. The first one is labor, spending time doing it yourself or pay others to spend time doing it for you. I had been there, done that, I was not doing that again. The second form of leverage is money. Money is a very good form of leverage. However, I didn't quite have enough money to start investing into startups and getting a really good quick return from the S&P 500 that was fast enough to get me to my goal. And the last form of leverage is developing products with no cost of replication i.e. code. And people that develop these kind of products will generally have the most leverage. Or so I thought. There is a fourth form of leverage, one that is better than code. And that's what I'm using for my current venture, but for this one particularly, everything was lining up perfectly. We had a killer idea, I had the perfect business partner who already had a nine-figure exit, and we were developing a product with no cost of replication. We poured lots of money into it, and for many reasons, it didn't work out. And this is where I really had to face my fears. I was kind of banking everything on this business. And when you compare it to the year previously, I was one year older, so one year closer to my 28 $1 million goal, and I was further away from getting there. And my rival, well, no joke, at the time, his business was literally valued at 10 figures. That's billions of dollars. And I was happy weirdly and it took me a long time to realize why I was feeling the way I was feeling and it's because even though the business that I had quote-unquote failed and financially it didn't bring me closer to my goal skill and knowledge wise I had actually learned so much more from the business that I failed at than the businesses that I quote-unquote succeeded at and obtaining the skill set and knowledge felt better than obtaining money and the reason for this is that money comes and goes but learnings and skill sets you'll have for the rest of your life and as more and more opportunities came up, I realized that you're not paid for what you know. You're paid for the work you do with that knowledge. And so I stopped calling my rival a rival. I let go of my ego. I stopped looking at him as my competition. And now I'm working with him directly, learning what it takes to build a billion dollar business. And in doing this, I think I've discovered the fastest way to get to my 1 million at 28 goal. And whatever goal you have. And it's not code. It's the fourth form of leverage. One that is so much better. You see, when you start up a business for the first time, you have to sell. You are always selling and selling hard to people who most of the time are completely indifferent as to whether you succeed or not. If you're bad at selling, you'll struggle. If you're good at selling, you'll probably get there after you slog it out for a long time. But what you really want is people to sell to you. And what do you need to make that happen? Trust. And how do you gain trust in the modern world? You build a brand. And brands have an audience. And how do you build an audience? You either do something extraordinary or you publish. Ideally, you do both. Document. Maybe that Gary Vee subscription was useful after all. Take my YouTube channel, for example. At the moment, it's incredibly small, but I have so many people coming to me with opportunities which is so alien to me considering I was the person reaching out to them when I had my own business. And thus far, it's clear that with this path, you not only experience less resistance, but you encounter far more opportunity than doing something that society tells you that you have to do to become wealthy. Now, instead of learning how to break down that barrier, I have the barrier broken down for me by others. So here's what I'll say. If you want to become rich in your 20s, don't start a business straight away. Start a brand, learn a skill set, and then pick from the array of opportunities that come your way. Be impatient with your action and patient with the results. Now that I'm a little bit more mature than my 23 year old self, <laughs> well, a little bit, I realized that it was never about getting to that 1 million in the first place. It was about having it all at once. And that's down to you to define no one else. I'm 28 years old in six weeks. And did I reach my $1 million goal? No, I didn't. But knowing I'm on the path to much, much more and enjoying the process is enough for me to be content for now. Patience with the result.